Hi. Speak here. Italian don't like pineapple on pizza, just to be sure. Okay, let's start. The first point is about why there is the Dodge Fox of Fire Dodge starting in a serious talk. Just to, to start with a good mood because it's one of the most famous things when there was released by Post One to many people want to keep to use this icon. There are lots of wallpaper like this case, so you can find it on the internet if you want. So, next start. Uh, fixing what Alex said about me, I want to do a little bit of introduction just to say that I am a developer like probably many of in this room. So, uh, I don't know many people there was the last year about following, not this talk, but similar about web extension. How many there was the last year? Huh, one, two, three, okay. So, how many are there JavaScript developers? Oh, okay. Half of the room. So, when you come back at home after the first demo, you can develop an extension without issue. And now we will discover why it's so easy. Jump back to me, I am involved in different open source projects, and the fun, the fun part that I my first extension that I developed was for the WordPress community to help them to improve the translation process in the website. So it started with something that I was needing another community with another community. So extension lets you to improve the user experience also of websites that are not yours. So I think that as Firefox users probably there in this room, I don't know, I don't want to know, but as browser users, this is probably true, we know that in the case of Firefox, Firefox is famous for the extensions. And in the long life of Firefox, there was a lot of extensions, like in this example, Firebug, I think that all the JavaScript developer use at once, at least, because there wasn't initially these kind of tools. There also was running also Internet Explorer 6, so it was something, oh my god, yes. But now we have Firefox developer tools integrated in the browser, but then we have also Session Manager integrated in the browser too. We have the tab browsing, something cool at the, in this, that period, but one of the most interesting things is Test Pilot. I don't know many people know about Firefox Test Pilot, but it's very important. Why? Because in Mozilla, the add-on ecosystem is very important because Mozilla itself used the technology to improve our user experience. So it's not one that develops an API and don't use it. No, they use it, so they improve it because they need it. So for a developer means that we are using something that works. And and it's something important for a developer because we, have, we, have, we don't have time to waste in something. So, starting from this point of view, we know that Mozilla used the add-ons API to release in Firefox system add-ons like the description tool that started as Firefox test pilot. And uh, if you want to see other experiments, go to the website and install on your Firefox new experiments. And one of the most important things now that you can also develop developer tools for Firefox that use the same API of Chrome for the Chrome developer tools. And you can extend also developer tools. And this is something for a developer amazing because developers usually develop tools to develop better. So it's like an inception, but it's very important for us. And another point that we are to enforce the fact that in Mozilla add-ons are very important is the marketplace. As developers, we know that it's important to have users to see if our work is good or not. In Mozilla, the code name is Emo, that is not Hamo. In Italian, it's the word for love, but we are, it's a done marketplace, just to be sure. And these are official statistics about the last year of the Hamo project. So let's start with a few numbers. We have that half of the Firefox users at least has an add-ons. So it means that we have probably a marketplace with a lot of users. Next point, actually, in the demo, we have 26,000 add-ons. I, I can say again, a lot of add-ons. And we have also a lot of developers, 9,000 developers. But another point, very important, is the 12 million monthly users on Emo. That, again, it's very more a lot. I don't know which, but a lot, a lot. And this means that when we are releasing an extension, we can reach a huge number of users, but be customers, because there are a lot of services that do extensions, too. 
So with these facts, we can think that uh, right now that what we are doing, probably someone will use it. So this is an example of my most famous extension. So it's always better to start with the real cases. It's a social share extension that implement the feature removed with Firefox 57. As you can see there, this is, uh, I released the extension in September. Now, as these users, and I, don't, I am not a beast, I don't have a business, so I only uploaded on Emo. I don't know many people can understand why there is this huge peak in the statistics. In, yes, exactly. In 14th of November, there was the release of Firefox 57. And there is a new tool of Firefox 57 that suggests to users to try adults. So a lot of new users in one day. But that's in the next week. And this is funny also this part because many people don't understand why every week there is peak, a low peak, another peak, a low peak. Because usually people on the weekend don't use Firefox because maybe they have to work or they have a family so they don't use the computer. Then not all of the people is a nerd that work all the week. So we have that Firefox to know how many users as an extension uh, daily send a ping to Hemo to say whether are, these are users as this extension, as this version. There are new versions, so in that way Mozilla track, in an anonymous way of course, the downloads. And these are the statistics inside, inside the Hemo portal. In Chrome, these doesn't exist. So, but I don't say that because I'm Mozillian, etc. But it's true, doesn't exist. The also, the interface is the most horrible things that you can see in the web is the Chrome Marketplace in the backend is the most horrible thing that you can see now. But it's true. It's not me. You is uh, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> the next point is that last year I started with this quote in another way. I say Firefox today is the most customizable browser that exists. But after the release of Firefox 57, I don't know many people saw or read it, blog post, uh, Twitter. Many people was not happy about the deprecation of many things. So many people will say, I cannot use my lovely extension that I'm using science forever because it's not developed anymore. Or this API is not supported. So many people was good getting back to a previous release, uh, complaining somewhere. So the question now is, for users, as, as we are users, Firefox still to be the most customizable browser? Actually, yes. And now we will see. Why? Okay, uh, we need to start about thinking that Xul, XFCOM are diet. This the old technology doesn't exist anymore for developers. It was boring, complicated, difficult to understand. Now we have the new technology that is as a parity with Chrome, this parity with Edge, with parity with Opera. Of course, different implementation because Firefox is most customizable. We have also the multi-process support on Windows with a different process, work in progress also for, for the other uh, operative systems. We have the support on Firefox for Android. Firefox for Android is the only browser on mobile that supports extension. So you can have a block origin as an example on your Firefox. So today we have this stuff. And this is an extent, a screenshot of in the end documentation about all the API that are now available, a lot of things. And it's not enough because I want to show you the most cool API that we have right now. Container started as Firefox Test Pilot project. Now it's integrated in your browser. What is the Container API? It's something pretty easy, useful to share session between a group of tabs, in few words. And you have an API to integrate it in your extensions. Next, we have the page action, a way to show a button in the address bar that you can develop when to show and then open a model. I want to show you an example again. This is my social extension, pretty simple. It's an iframe with, that do something. And you can use all the JavaScript API uh, library that you prefer. We have also uh, one of the most asked things on the internet. I can do an extension that communicate another extension. Yes, you can do it. There is an API that enables to do that. We have also the way to change the new tab on page with something else. The difference is this case is on 
Chrome that has different because support also bookmark and history, but in Firefox doesn't exist a page for that. So it's not supported in that case. We have also the way to use OAuth authentication from Firefox. So we don't need to use a, a library because it's, as an example, this amazing extension that uh, let, uh, let you to access in real time to notification on GitHub, automatically do the authentication with Firefox. So for a developer, it's very easy to do authentication. This one is the most, most interesting things because you can have a binary on the computer that communicate with your browser in a privacy way. And we can say that there is a JSON, the application is a binary on your computer, and we have the web browser that communicate in that way. And this is an example how Firefox understands what is the, the binary, what extension can access, and the JavaScript code. It's pretty easy for us to do an extension that do that. I want to show you a few examples. This is me on my CapD uh, environment that communicate with my phone inside Firefox. With the, it's an extension. There is also a KeyPass extension as an example for Password Manager. There is a, an extension that's enabled the MIDI API in Firefox. So you can find many of them. We have also support for print review and reader mode API if you want it. I have to run because the time is not so much. But this is very funny. I don't know many people know Doom. They've done a fork that when you kill a monster, kill a process. We have a version that kill tabs. Because the API enabled to us to do it, also these kind of things. And this is an extension. It's a, a bunch of HTML, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript stuff all together. We have the ID card that explain the data and what extension can do, like permissions, the files that have to run, context scripts, you can define the pattern, the file to load, etc. inside the manifest. Next, we have the background scripts. These are scripts that communicate behind uh, your tabs, your developer tools, as an example, because there is a sandbox. You cannot have an extension that runs everywhere. You have an extension that can run everywhere, communicating between different files. So background scripts are pretty useful. We have content scripts that is one of the most used. As an, I think that ev everyone there has at least an extension that improves GitHub. Usually is a JavaScript injected in a page. And it's very easy to do it, an extension like that. We have the browser action that is again is like a page action, but it's a button that is always on the browser UI. And we have also a list to define on the document on the manifest about the file that extension can access. So not the extension cannot access all the files on the computer, only the file that we define in this manifest. So it's safety for the users. Another point was the last year was the review on Emo because it uh, was manual. So when we have to release a new version, also maybe a bug fix, we have to wait someone that review the code. Uh, it requires a lot of time that in the web is something not acceptable. Now it's automatically, for a specific kind of API, is manual to, again. But it's very fast to have a new release and be very happy about this work because was one of the most problem for me was that the Chrome is automatically, they doesn't care about anything, about strict code, uh, policy, linting, they doesn't care about anything. In Mozilla, in the demo, you have a lot of warning about what your code is doing wrong. So it's helpful for us to developers to see that this code is bad, can be better. And this is uh, a lot of things that we have in Firefox 57, Firefox 58, Firefox 59, and try to do it uh, as one slide recap of the most cool things that you can see. As an example, the sidebar, because Firefox is the only one that can have a sidebar, you can do it an extension that uses the sidebar. You have, uh, as an example, now you can uh, embed the web extension experiment with an extension. Again, uh, there is also what else? One of the most asking things was to have back the vertical management for the tabs. Now there is the API in Firefox 59 that enables developers to hide, close, open tabs. So there is a lot of working, and the best way is to check the DOS blog to see what are the most cool API that are coming. And there is also there are examples, because developers have a lot of things to do, and now we have 45 examples of complete extensions available documented on MDN, and when you are opening an API, you will find an extension that using this API, so you can see the code working inside your browser. Complete everything documented. Last year was not that way, now we have that. 
Documentation is one of the most things boring to do for a developer, but someone else do it for us. So, how you can try it? This page about double dot debugging enable to you to debug also the extension inside Firefox and what also your development extension using this button. So it's pretty easy. Download the extension, open, and automatically it's installed like, temporary until you close Firefox. Next, uh, we have a tool for command line for people that love command line. How many lovers there are of the command line there? <laughs> there is a tool that enables to do a lot of things. Signed extension, linting, watcher, uh, load extension of Firefox for Android, a lot of things in a tool. So there is the UI way, command line way. It's your choice to do an extension. I've done also script because as I said, Chrome Marketplace is horrible. You cannot have a graph about the statistics of download. So I've done a script that scrape this data and cross this data also with Firefox. So you can see what is the best browser for you, for your extension. And now we have also a new interface on Emo. This is the add-on developer hub with few extensions that I've made. We got some new logo, graphic, etc. And we have also the new Hemo interface. Also, we have also stickers asked to us with the new octopus mascots that is more mobile friendly and there are, it's more easy to find extensions. I like it a lot, it's that before. And this works, of course, also mobile, better than before. There is also a website for people that say, okay, I have this Chrome extension, works with Firefox. Probably yes, you can upload there. Automatically, we'll say, okay, it's working or not. So pretty easy for us to check, also easy to load inside Firefox. As an example, the KDE Connect extension had the support on Firefox because I opened a ticket, the next day was on the marketplace because he has only to upload on the marketplace. So it's pretty easy to have today an extension from Chrome on Firefox. The results are standard in progress. Yes, they are working. We know that Bootress is very slow. They are working. We got update on this course. There is, they are starting working again after Firefox 57 because it was like stopped because the employee was busy. And now they're starting working again on this standard. Think about it, a standard to develop extension for all the browsers. In something that I think 10 years ago was C5, I think, probably yes. And I want to give you to you a few links, very interesting. This course, this is a category, this is a forum with all the stuff, all the projects that Mozilla is doing. You can find Common Voice, Mozilla, etc. There is also a section for development add-ons. So you have questions, you can write there, someone will help you. So and also you can reach developers from Mozilla, etc. And there is also other links. Of course, the add-ons blog is one of the most important resources to get updates about what's going on. And now it's time for questions. Sorry I have to run, but there was a lot of things. Firefox 57 is pretty cool. Yes? Uh, actually, there are different. I think personally there are, work, there are different API working, but it's better to say about web experiments they are trying, but there is George probably has more information about the planning because for a Mozillian, you have to check all the Bugzilla tickets. It's something complicated to do. There is the blog and don'ts. You can check the new release. And personally, I think that uh, a new uh, implementation to change the browser setting from an extension are very interesting because you can do an extension that interacts more strongly with privacy settings in Firefox, as an example, than before. And I think also the tab, the tab hiding API was one of the most requested with Firefox 57 because there was a lot of users that was using the vertical system for tabs. So personally, these are, for me, the most cool. For the end of the year, I have an idea what are the plan, but there are a lot of things to do to cover the gap with the old previous API. There are other questions? Okay, so I, I expect that when you come back after the first demo, you will develop an extension, of course, and release for us because we are users and we need the extension to improve our experience pretty easily with a button to install an extension. So thank you for your time.